I'm at the Chilbolton Observatory in Hampshire, which is part of the UK's space infrastructure. One of this year's new ventures is a small microsatellite called UCube One. The UK's first national cube satellite has several experiments on board, which will explore exciting new technologies. One of these experiments is a small, very light camera, which we've designed at the Open University with UK industry, which will take photographs from space. And now our challenge is to prove it can withstand radiation. Satellite images have changed whole industries, agriculture, weather, geomapping, and our understanding of the universe. And current debates occur around the choice between a few big, expensive cameras on large spacecraft developed by governments, or many, many cheaper cameras on nanosatellites, perhaps developed by small to medium enterprises, providing real-time global monitoring. Our work with UCube One is looking at the second route. Here in the control room of the Chilbolton ground station, the data will be received from UCube One and later redistributed to the, all the collaborators on the project. And it's universities like the Open University that are key partners in the UK's space programme. And this is a life-size model of the UQ spacecraft, and inside it is a small experimental camera which will demonstrate new UK technology. Here's our camera experiment on a small printed circuit board. Called C3D, it actually contains three separate imaging sensors. Well, one of the key things will be to demonstrate that this new technology works without glitches, surviving the space radiation damage. The Earth is surrounded by radiation belts formed from highly energetic particles. When eruptions occur on the Sun's surface, more radiation particles are released towards Earth. This combined radiation can have a severe effect on satellite electronics. So our challenge is to create imaging cameras that can survive the radiation for longer. So we're hoping our little camera on UCube one will withstand the bombardment of the energetic space particles. Then we hope they'll be incorporated into larger science instruments. And who knows, one day it may save lives, for example, in disaster monitoring.